peace must be our goal and our guide. And all that we strive for as a human family, dignity and hope, progress and prosperity, depends on peace. But peace depends on us. Good afternoon, viewers. I want to take a few minutes in the Africa School of Thought. I want to say a few points regarding the situation of the Chief Justice in the Republic of Kenya. The Chief Justice is part of the governance of the people of Kenya. He is one arm of the governance of the Republic of Kenya. The Chief Justice has never convened or tried to convene a meeting between the President, the Speaker of the National Assembly, and himself to find out the weakest link in the fight in the governance of the people of Kenya. It is therefore very shameful for the whole Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya to use a platform, external platform, to announce a regime change proceeds using the platforms of international civil society to dismember the government of Republic of Kenya. As a Pan-African, I feel sorry and saddened by the events that are taking place in the judiciary of the Republic of Kenya. The president or the executive has done its best. It has given the funding that is needed to fight corruption. Every time the agencies that fight corruption arrange, indict, and deliver a suspect in the courts of the Republic of Kenya. The same judiciary that the Chief Justice represents, the same judiciary that the Chief Justice says it is very perfect, releases these people at times on flimsy reasons, blocks. the root of justice, obstructs justice, the case of the former uh, Deputy Chief Justice, Lady Muiru, who was found, who should have taken a plea, but because of the problems that the judiciary has and the weaknesses, the incompetences that the judiciary has, the Lady Justice Muiru was allowed to petition the DCI and DPP's application and a charge. She never took a charge, a plea in the normal court. Of course, the events are much bigger than what we see today. It is so state that the Chief Justice can, is, the, is the one who can mention about the failure, yet the word failure is actually associated with the judiciary of the Republic of Kenya. Everybody in the judiciary knows, every Kenyan, young or old, knows that there is a problem with the Chief Justice. I take one example. For the Chief Justice to talk about the nullified elections, that dynasties collected themselves in kingdoms, in business entrepreneurs, win an election, shows to you that he has something that is against the current administration of President Uhuru Mungai Kenyatta. 
I therefore call upon the international community not to listen to the side that actually weakened the fight against corruption in Kenya, but help the Kenyan people to fight corruption. Because the weakest link, which all of us know, is the judiciary in Kenya. If the Chief Justice was pleasing the civil society funders, the NGOs that gathered in Oxford, let them hear this message that it is him and him alone. It is his incompetency, the lack of direction, the lack of leadership, the poor leadership qualities, the lack of pointing out the mistakes in law, the law itself that the Chief Justice talks about is the one to recommend which type of law. He can also suggest to the three arms, to the other two arms of government that the, the laws in Kenya surrounding cases of corruption are weak. But as usual, he has been a weakest link, remains a weakest link, who is plotting, who is planning, who is trying to execute a foreign instigated plan against the Jubilee government. Thank you very much, viewers. That is a statement as far as the, the, the situation of Kenya is concerned. The Chief Justice, therefore, is plotting a coup, a constitutional coup, because he is trying to blackmail the leadership of the Republic of Kenya. Thank you very much, viewers. God bless you. countries in Africa that produce oil. Kenya today joined one of those, became one of the member states of oil producing countries in Africa. It exported its first oil where President Uru Kenyatta flagged off the oil that was got from Tukana in one of the northeastern parts of this country. But is oil a curse to Africa? Is oil a curse to the entire places where oil is found. We see in the Middle East, the wars in Iran, in Saudi Arabia, in Yemen, in United Arab Emirates. It has developed the area in Qatar. We all have king, many cities, skyscrapers grow, coming up because of the proceeds from the oil. But can Africa emulate that example and bring the same oil proceeds to make sure that it makes lives better for the people the betterment of the people of Africa and their families and their other activities. I want to see that. But I might not be able to explain why Africa always falls a victim. Are there external forces that make the oil in Africa to become sour? Is it the competition of the oil companies, Total and Shell BP and others, that come to Africa to take the share of the oil. Simply because we have no energy, ability to be able to drill the oil ourselves, refine it ourselves. It is shocking, therefore, to go to Nigeria, for example, a country that produces third in the world for oil production, has no petrol at petrol station. Is this not a curse? 
If it's not a curse, what do you call it? Thank you. of African continent of free trade area is a, a step forward for the African integration and it is very much welcome both by Africans in Africa and those in diaspora. The creation of such is the only second one since the formation of World Trade Organization in 1994 and is only compared to the size that can compete if it works in Africa. 1.3 billion people will benefit out of this free trade that has been signed and endorsed by 54 heads of state. After several years of up and down in the valleys of Africa and the mountains of Africa, we finally came to a conclusion that this has to happen, which brings us to the dream of Kwame Nkrumah when he said at least building a, bri a block by block, Africa will one day unite to stand as a united continent. But are the members of this African Union committed? Will they implement what they have decided? Today, in several countries, we see signs of xenophobia, the lack of patriotism amongst the younger generation, the lack of employment, the unemployment, the mistreatment of the young, the youth, those who need jobs. The corruption, the amount of corruption that has eaten the entire continent of Africa could hamper the free trade that we are anticipating on the continent. What measures, therefore, have African heads of state put in place to ensure that those who lag behind, those who dropped, drop out, must be penalized. We should not sign the document for the sake of documents, but we should sign documents for practical reasons that we shall implement what Africa needs today. Can it happen in our times? Is it going to happen? Is integration a mirage? Is integration worth going to happen? Will it happen? What has happened about the present blocks that have started integration process? What have they done? Is Africa integrating? Thank you.
peace must be our goal and our guide. And all that we strive for as a human family, dignity and hope, progress and prosperity, depends on peace. But peace depends on us. Good evening, viewers. Welcome to Punchline Africa TV, broadcasting all the way from the Republic of Kenya in Nairobi. Thank you very much, viewers, wherever you are. This is a diplomatic leaks program show, a show from Nairobi. Hot, the weather is fantastic in Nairobi. And we are here, well dressed up, ready to go. I want to thank my co host, who has actually Today, there must be an early Christmas arriving, <laughs> which is, we are, the Son of God is about to be born. And therefore, we must rejoice in white colors, well organized, well defending the institution of Punchline Africa TV. With me in the studio is none other than Miriam Ogutu. Thank you. Good. <laughs> Good afternoon, madam. You're very excited. Good afternoon. I am Mr. very excited because... Christmas has come early. No, what I am the what? only Lone Ranger yeah. left on Facebook and media. I am defending my president, Mr. Pan-African president. Everybody has come. The Tanga Tanga remnants have arrived on my platform. But you can imagine one man has taken them on, <laughs> and I will take you on. I will never block anybody. You can say anything, you can continue to jump, you can even go and tell God and ask what is his heart, what does his heart say about Uhuru Mwingai Kenyatta. God will tell you he loves him. So go ahead, because it is never bought. Friendship is never bought. I defend with passion. In 2009, you never liked him. Today, you like both of these guys very much. You want to pretend to love them. But for me, I don't give up. And I'm happy for those who are doing so. Go ahead, insult me. Hip all the names, foreigner, what, hippo, fat man, good, thank you. But this fat guy does not give up. And I will not give up. Thank you very much. There are people in Africa who value my work. And as the Bible says, if you don't value my work, one day I will take the dust. But I'm telling you the truth. I stand by the truth. The truth is we have now forgotten that there is a conflict a maritime conflict between Kenya and Somalia. This afternoon, we shall touch on Somalia and the conflict oil that leaks. Somalia, according to the latest which came in last evening, is going ahead to float its oil blocks despite the fact that we are still in court. That's one. The geology of offshore Somalia is proven, and if proven, by IOC, are convinced that there is improvement in security. Somalia this December will float its oil blocks. You mean the, in the December that we're in now? In, in this one here? Being the 18th. Yes. They're planning to, 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 to auction? Yes. To float it where? To float on the stock exchange. And the case is still at the ICJ. ICJ. We are here <coughs> looking at the return of a conflict. Kenya has contested these oil blocks. There is something that I don't want to keep quiet about Africa. 
We are not proactive. We are reactive. This case of Somalia and Kenya, as we keep quiet, as the Kenya government keeps quiet, the Somalis are busy. As long as you have that short prime minister in Somalia, as long as you have the Americans chasing this oil, as long as you have total oil that has caused conflicts in several other African countries chasing this oil, as long as you have Qatar, Turkey, UAE, Norway chasing this oil, we are going to have a conflict in the Indian Ocean. We are going to have a return of piracy, of conflicts, of armed struggle in the Indian Ocean. We are now watching. The world is watching. Somalia is floating its shares on the stock exchange in complete contravision of the articles of the law and the courts of international law. It has gone ahead. The minister of, of, of oil is going ahead, even floating the shares. They have gone ahead. They have collected, the bureau reported the Somalia experience piracy, political stability. On, on land, the government is fighting Al-Qaeda and Al-Shabaab. We have done a summation of potential leads, and it comes to about 30 billion barrels. 30 million, billion, billion, 30 billion barrels of oil in the blocks. Somalia. We have, we, the it, it is now the time for Kenya to wake up. It is now the time for Kenya to stand up. We have had enough. For me, my, my role is to say what I, the truth. I speak on evidence. It's here. This is a whole evidence of seven, six pages indicating that Somalia oil may secure peace. It's a document that intelligence systems of international nature <coughs> have published. What is going on quietly in Somalia? And we are keeping quiet. People are, are thinking things are, are all right. We have normalized relationship. No, not me. Not me. My job is not finished yet. I finished one phase of removing that small judge. But I am not yet done with the entire thing until Somalia withdraws this case from the ICJ. What is the use of going to ICJ? You are living with us for millions and millions and perhaps millions of years. Kenya and Somalia, who knows, in the future, they could become one country. Africa is removing borders. We are here creating borders. We are here speculating about billions of barrels. Oil has become a curse, a stepping stone for the French hegemony on this continent, a stepping stone for the American hegemony on this continent, a stepping stone for Turkey, Qatar, Emirates, Saudi Arabia on this continent. A close a stepping stone for mercantile capitalism that dismembered this continent before partitioning in 1884. We have a problem as Africans. We must step back and rearrange our strategy. We must re revent the wheel. We must start a renaissance an African renaissance that will bring about to defend our countries, to make sure that our countries have a vision. Somalia's leadership has no vision. Its vision is to sell oil. The Prime Minister of Somalia, a well-known Norwegian national, who pretends to be a Somali even when he's a Prime Minister, he has never renounced that leadership, his passport. He still works with a, Canadian, a Norwegian passport. 
He's a leader of the Somali people. He's working for the Norwegians to dismember the same region that helped him to bring about peace and pacify Somalia. The document will be posted for my people to see for those and it will be put on my website of www.panafricanforumltd.com for people to read and understand why I have brought this topic in diplomatic leaks, the conflict oil that leaks, 30 billion barrels, million. <laughs> That Take is, it over. That is what really is at stake here. Uh, this is according to an independent assessment of the 15 blocks that, remember, are still under dispute between uh, Kenya and Somalia. Matter of fact, the case still is at the ICJ, the International Court of Justice, and uh, has found that there may be 30 billion uh, barrels of oil uh, that is according to the independent assessment uh, in the shallow and deep waters in Somalia there, which easily is accessible so long as it remains free of piracy uh, that has afflicted the, the area in the recent memory, and we've seen uh, that Paris also, you know, over. It, it boiled over to Kenya and that uh, even forced Kenya to uh, enter Somalia before even Amisom was forced uh, was formed because we saw the acts of piracy and kidnappings and terrorism activities are coming into Kenya. So uh, we know the act what uh, the Amisom team is doing there. Uh, you know, different countries you know have contributed to bring this peace now that is being enjoyed in Somalia. It's not. Uh, ha it has not really. Uh, it's not solid, but it's a working progress there, and we see how much Kenya really has contributed. Uh, towards finding a lasting solution among other nations also that has given their army there and th themselves there to make sure uh, that uh, they help us to Somalia to stabilize and to have a peace. And now on the uh, 4th of December, the United Nations renewed resolution 2,500 effective until December 2020 allows uh, you know states and regional organizations to enter into Somalia territorial waters. So I don't know... Has calm and peace, doctor, returned fully in Somalia for even the United Nations to allow for other outside players to come in into Somalia and uh, make, you know, in, into the Somalia territorial waters? Is there more that needs to be done before we even allow these outside players who are in the heart and in the thick of, you know, even the dispute that is happening between Kenya and Somalia right now? First of all, there is no calm that has returned. Two, for United Nations, there is one interesting part that Kenyans need to know, and especially the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. There is a problem here, and we want to congratulate ourselves because some people might not even send us a note to say thank you for the job that you have done in Africa. They might not. We congratulate ourselves that Sudan, South Sudan, they finished the, 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 the job yesterday. Our noise here, our constructive noise has shaped the destiny of South Sudan. There's leadership going, coming together in the table. Now, when it comes to the question of Somalia, we have taken Somalia issue as we shall talk. The Somali government is not talking. The Somali government is acting. And that is where the danger is, Miriam. They are acting. They are selling this oil. People are buying houses. People are buying properties in Qatar. Companies in Qatar out of this money. The same man who created Soma, Soma Oil and the Gas Company Limited is the same man who is at the helm in Mogadishu. Is the same man who is selling this oil, who is pushing so hard for this conflict never to end. You are bringing in companies like Konoko, Philips, Amok Amoko, and the children, which are United States companies. These companies are mercantile capitalist companies. They are coming in to buy the oil, the shares, 
we might have a problem to remove them from Somalia. Today, as we sit here and talk about this, the Minister of Foreign Affairs must engage. We have so many things opening on the Somalia-Kenya relationship. Mm -hmm. The Somalis are not with us. Very few are with us. The rest have gone to look for new pastures and married new women, seduced new other partners, forgotten the partners who died with them, who suffered with them, who have given them the best asylum that they would ever have on planet Earth. That's one. Look at what they have done in Mogadishu. Look at what they are doing about the port. Look at what they are doing. They are looking to America. America is looking and brought an embassy, one of the best well-guarded embassies in Africa is in Mogadishu. But behind all this, there is something very interesting. And the interesting part is this. As we move towards the oil floating of shares, there is a possibility that Somalia could break into regions. Very big possibility. Mm -hmm which will make it now more complicated for anybody who is trying to do an underhand strategy. What the United States of America should have done, and what worries me as an analyst, a strategist in this region, which is a part of the history that I have read, the politics I have read, the international relations I have read, is why did America refuse to proscribe Al Shabaab. Mm -hmm. okay, Maybe very, you might have some <laughs> clues. A very good question. And Al Shabaab still really poses a great threat, not just in Somalia, but also across uh, this region. And, Doctor, yeah, it is, it is mind baffling that uh, America would not find it necessary, uh, you know, to proscribe Al Shabaab as a terrorist group while it has all the hallmarks. I mean, it, there's no even debate about it. So you wonder what's really happening when it comes to the uh, geopolitical, you know, politics up there, but, uh, and, and the interests that are involved in, in such matters. But there was an interview that um, the Minister of Petroleum and natural resources there in Somalia are conducted and when he was asked about how the country will approach even the licensing of these um, blocks oh. that are still under dispute, this is what uh, Mr. Ahmed, his name is Mohammed Ahmed, this is what he says. He says we are hoping to first of all present and showcase our data, then follows the bid round. The companies will show their interest in bidding for the blocks and then selection will come. We welcome IOCSs to show their interest in Somalia, who is favored by Somalia. Uh, will be done in a transparent way. This is the way uh, that we are proceeding. The central government of Somalia is responsible. Uh, we will work closely with the states. They will have their own contribution and the federal government will lead the process. So this is something that appears to be is quite on the process. It's something that is about to happen and is going to happen. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, what does this say about uh, the case at the ICJ, which Somalia itself as a country has insisted it does not want an outside of court settlement. It wants the court, the case the ICJ to take, uh, you know, uh, to take its course, and uh, nothing is going to stop them, and they do not want to speak uh, with Kenya about this matter outside of the ICJ court. But now they are the ones who seems to be going against, uh, you know, the spirit of all this court process, and they're going on with this process of selling this, uh, you know, getting ready to sell this, uh, you know, oil blocks, and yet uh, the case is still there. So what does this say uh, to the Somalia? What does this say about the Somalia leadership? First of all. The case is between, is in the tribunal. The, the judge, presiding judge, will retire before he hears because he's a Somali national. He cannot to be part and parcel of the case. But when you hear Ahmed telling you about how they are going to float or where how they are floating. It is not next year. It is this year. Mm -hmm. They're getting ready to do it. It is this year. Mm -hmm. In fact, they are doing it in, in December. This December. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
They are doing it December, before the end of the year. So very soon, the situation is going to be very complicated. Mm -hmm. Kenya has to wake up. Kenya has to stand up. Kenya has to defend its territory. Kenya has to work to make sure that we work out a method to stop Somalia, to engage, to politicize this matter. Because what has killed us in Kenya is the lack of politicization of this matter on international scene. We seem to assume that we are dealing with very good people, not knowing that we are dealing with double-edged men. One is a Norwegian, the other one has just surrendered an American passport, which can be renewed. Maybe it, has, it was symbolically removed, but it still remains with it. So we are dealing with people who have masters somewhere else. The masters are not Somalis. The masters are somewhere else who give them instructions on what they should do against Kenya. So it poses a threat. It poses a big, big security threat. We have not finished neutralized Al-Shabaab. Al-Shabaab is still in the corner. The Americans have refused to help us to proscribe Al-Shabaab so that we know the leaders of Al-Shabaab, ban them and look for them under the warrants of International Criminal Court and other agencies that seek to stop such people. We, the Americans have refused because they have interest. They want the oil. They are not even bothered now about what you want to do. They don't want, you see the, the, the way things are going. They don't bother whether America, whether, <laughs> they don't bother whether Somalia is stable or not. They are not bothered. But as it is right now with this new uh, revelation that Somalia is actually planning to go ahead and auction uh, this and hold uh, an auction, a licensing round uh, on over these 15 blocks that are still under dispute between Kenya and Somalia, where does this put now the whole process at the ICJ? What can Kenya do? Can Kenya, Kenya can, can, under Article, Article 134, mm -hmm. Article 34 of the ICJ, I don't know why Kenya is wasting time. Why Kenya is wasting time? The article is very clear. You can Google it and find out. It must be consent. We did not consent. I don't know why the lawyers here don't say it. Kenya did not consent. An international court of justice is not international criminal court. We did not consent to go there. We can as well abscond. And we don't recognize the, the judgment. It is not enforceable by law, by, by, by punitive sanctions against Kenya. What will they do? This is a country that has no toilet. We are just building a toilet. We are helping them to build a toilet. And we cannot go on playing with these people like this. They are now auctioning. They are now auctioning, putting... The money is not going to the ordinary Somalis. The money, the point I'm trying to make is to tell the ordinary Somalis that this money is being banked in, it, in, in Turkey, in Qatar, in Washington, in Paris, in Saudi Arabia, in Egypt, and the Somalis continue to be poor. They continue to be poor. When a flood arrives, it takes all of them. While the two men, Mr. Hassan Hari and Mr. Farimajo, are banking money from the proceeds of oil, imaginary oil fields, in Indian Ocean, what a shame to Africa. What a shame to Africa. What a shame. A very good shame, not to me, to them. I am 
them fighting for the rights of the Somali people, for them to be careful that a Norwegian prime minister, not a Somali prime minister, is fighting so hard to sell these oil fields. The document is here. If you have not read, then you have no IQ yourself. Read the document. It is not me who wrote it. It's an intelligence document which shows companies are coming in, buying the, 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 the oil ridges to make it very difficult for the two countries even to have negotiations. That is my position. And that's the position, not me, of the documents, of the minister of oil of Somalia. Mm -hmm. So it is up to Kenya, it's up to Kenya to take a stand. I've done my bit, single-handed on breakfast. I entered the court this month of the small, tall, rubbish judge. Conflict of interest had arrived there also. You are Somali national. You are Somali yourself. Your father advises Faramijo. Your father is a clan leader. You are a friend of Faramijo who worked together with you in the UN, in the United States of America. You now want to preside over a case. Don't you see the conflict of interest? There you are. Yes, indeed. And uh, in the case before the ICJ, Somalia argues that the maritime boundary should be an extension of the land border running southeast into the ocean, while Kenya favors the parallel line to the latitude from its territorial border uh, with Somalia. The two interpretations of the maritime boundary created a triangular area of approximately 100,000 uh, square kilometers, which is currently under the, uh, the dispute. So the land that is... Um, under the dispute uh, right now that the 15 oil blocks lies uh, is about 100,000 uh, square kilometers, so that is it. So what started, uh, what started as an economic dispute over the maritime boundary has now exposed bilateral and internal rifts that are threatening the region owing to the volatile nature of Somali's political and security situation. So this should be a worry uh, for the whole region because now will this affect Yes. Even the coordination of Kenya and Somalia, the fight against Al Shabaab, will this it will. weaken? It will weaken, Miriam. It will weaken. And uh, you see, Miriam, go, let's go back to this statement again. Mm -hmm. It's very detailed. And I hope the, the handlers in Kenya, those who look at this in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, can listen to this statement. We are hoping to, first of all, present and showcase our data. Uh huh. Then it follows the bid round. Companies will show their interest in the bidding for the blocks. And then the selection will come. Have you seen it? This is a mafia. And the Kenya is watching. Nobody has written a statement in rebuttal of this. Nobody. I've not seen any statement coming from Kenya to condemn this action. Then we welcome IOCS to show their interest in Somalia. Who is favored by Somalia will be done in a transparent way. Have you seen? Now we are going into cartelism, politics of cartels, mafiadom, the Sicilian syndicate syndrome is arriving. We have our friend Ahmed Ali Mohammed has arrived uh, online. Abdi Samad Ali, we've not seen you for a while. Now. And a look at <laughs> nice what to see you. Uh, hey, Miriam, that that is the way that we are proceeding. The central government of Somalia is responsible. We will work closely with the states. They will have their own contribution, but the federal government will lead the process. In contravision, contravision of articles of International Court of Justice. We have contravened. The matter is to stay put. Stay orders were said, don't do anything with 
with Somalia on the blocks. Somalia has gone ahead. They are doing their bit. Mm -hmm. They are selling secretly. My biggest worry is by the time we reach to the conclusion which Kenya should do by 2020 January, if they don't do it, we shall work through another country to do it. Because it's only states that can help. I'm looking at a time to square with the Somalis. I have been looking for a time to square with the Somalis, to tell them, especially Farimajo, especially Farimajo and Hassan Harie, I want to square with him on international scene. This is my department. Give it to me. Now, what I'm going to do is to bypass even this government and get a partner in Africa. We file an application. I'm going to file. Let's meet there as interested parties, as a nation. Play with Matsanga no more. I've been looking for entry point. And last night a vision arrived. One country has accepted for me to go as a as a nation. We want to lecture to this court. We want to tell the court never to get involved in this. We have African Union that can sit down and, and you know, resettle this problem. And we are not going to give up. I'm not giving up. I'm sorry. I won't disclose which country you come. We are coming. Next, next June, we shall be very many. We shall be very many. Abdi Salam Asamad, I am not going to go into that because I, he knows. He called me Mr. Fak, a kafir. Mr. Farimajo called me a kafir. But I want, you know, I want to touch him legally and intellectually because he doesn't look so intellectual. He does not have the capacity to reason with an intelligent head. So I will go through that country. And I, I want to thank that country in Africa. That thank you very much. Always stand by me. We shall file in January an application as a country, as a state, as a Mikas Kure in that court. Let's see. 15 judges. Let's see. Let's see. I give you the, you Somali people who are Somali government that thinks it cannot sit on the table. Let's meet in the Hague. Hague, I have ever won battles. I have ever won the ICC, the other court next with a woman with a skirt and a petticoat. I am now coming this side. And I thank you by then, there will be a different prosecutor, a different registrar. Shame upon you. I've finished your so-called surrogate. Hey. Abdul Salam Ahmed, know it today. Go and hang on a tree. You will cry more, not me. Because I'm just warning Kenya. I don't know why Kenya, Kenya thinks, you, you know, Kenya does not know it is not dealing with right people. He's still, they are dealing with mercenaries. These are mercenaries. Hassan Harie is a mercenary. He's an NGO mercenary who worked for Norwegian government. The track record in Kenya is well known. And we are dealing with him with soft gloves. You are not dealing with normal people who have gone to school. 
These are very bad idiots in power in Mogadishu who stop their own former president, like a Sharif Ahmed Sharif, a well-organized man, not even to travel. What type of government is this? I call upon the MPs, those who know me in Mogadishu, to stand up against this Hassan Ghari, vote him off. Most of you whom I helped to fill applications in the United Kingdom, stand up this is the time. Don't give me money. Give me the currents of removing such dictatorial tendencies, disuniting factors, negative elements on the African continent. Stand up ye. Time has come. It is sad. When you look at what Somalia is doing against Kenya on the question of the seat at the United Nations, you saw the shocking news? <laughs> Have you seen the shocking news? I've been telling you. I'm an open man. I don't want to have any audience with anybody. I'm sorry. Now I have found a route. You know, I enjoy international <laughs> scene. I've found a route. I want to look at this Somali Anthony General and ask him who he is. What does he want to do? And that's the evidence the white guys in the Hague are looking for. They are not there to destabilize the region. So prepare your documents. After all, they can't even speak better English. So we shall meet there. Prepare your statements. Bring all this Abdul Salam, Hamadi, or what? Come there. Even bring that woman from the US. Bring her. Let's finish each other there in, in the Hague. Next year, January, my country on the African continent, we are filing an amicus curiae as a state. Don't ask. Nobody can ask a state. Hello? The international law says it is only a state that can file an amicus curiae. Therefore, I've been all along looking for a state, and I got it. This is the Matanga you hear about. And therefore, if you think I am here going to praise you, sorry. Come. I'll come as a state. I filed a complaint, not an amicus cure. Now, I have been writing every night six hours writing my amicus cure and the state we shall go with the state Anthony general of that country we present our petition asking this thing to stop so prepare your way after all i've removed the best lawyer from you don't you see that i'm very powerful i removed the lawyer where is mima muna where is muna she's gone Farimajo, where is Mona? I found her in London getting out of the old belly. I told her, you are dealing with Hassan Hari, a thief. He's the one selling these blocks. I'm not a diplomat. All right, so in that interview uh, that uh, the Minister for Petroleum and Natural Resources there in uh, Somalia, Mr. Ahmed, uh, I was having this interview and uh, he mentioned that uh, uh, 
uh, Somalia is ready for business and all the necessary steps have been taken. The legislation is ready and Somalia uh, offshore is safe. Well, I am happy that this this peace is quietly returning to Somalia. I think that is what we all wanted as a region, and, and uh, you know, and the the countries that have been there trying to make sure that Somalia comes back to its uh, to what it used to be, at least closer to that. So now that Somalia is 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 ready for business and is ready to rebuild. Is uh, this move now, what they're doing right now, will this jeopardize, put everything else in jeopardy, the gains that have been made, and what will this say? I mean, the relationship, how will the, it be between Somalia and Kenya moving forward? Uh, <laughs> there, there are some comments that make us laugh, that Haria will sue me for pronouncing his name. I don't even want to pronounce his name. Abdi Salamat Samad. Samad Ali, please. I don't want to pronounce that guy's name. That you know, a Jani man who is not even a Somali. How how, how is it? Uh, how is it pronounced? To, please, pre, please write 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 how it's supposed to be pronounced so that we say it right, uh, Mr. Abdi Samad Ali. Thank you for being very active. We've we've missed you here. You've been away for a while. He's saying he's been studying his uh, petroleum engineering uh, degree there in Norway. Good job. Engineering again in Norway. <laughs> <laughs> Abdi Salam, you have a degree in engineering preparing for the sale of this oil. <laughs> but it's okay. This time we have alerted Kenya. Kenya must do something. The Antony General of Republic of Kenya must file a complaint to the court saying it is something wrong. We should not discuss the territory. Because if that is the case, we want Kenya also to go and discuss it. We can also float. Another strategy, because let's now put what we call Katogo, Ugandan style, a Kavuyo. Let's bring Kavuyo. Let's also go and put stock exchange and we get the blocks. Because time has come for Kenya to stop behaving as if you are dealing with normal people. We are dealing with traumatized people here. Who need the counseling every day, even that the prime minister needs the counseling. You know, before you leave Mogadishu airport, you pray to God that I'm coming. You don't know where the plane will land properly or come out properly. So you are traumatized. <laughs> Hello? Hamad, I've sent a boy. That is it for you. I don't know how he's going to answer my oil, hey, hey. Somali oil. How do you say that name? Is it Heire hey, or what? Boko Heire, Heire. What is this name? What? <laughs> Where did, 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 Dr. Matsanga, you are welcome, is called Heire. Is it Heire or Harie? Whatever the name is, I don't want to know. Heire sounds like a Rastafarian. Uh, yes, yes. I, you know, Miriam, maybe you are good at <laughs> pronouncing these names. I'm trying. But yeah, for but me, this is a I don't like this myself. guy, that Somali Prime Minister. I don't like him. I, do you know I have a dozier on this guy? I don't like him. I just don't like the guy. What he has done in the NGO, if I parade it to the world here. I don't like the guy. That's it. You, you can hate me up to wherever you want to take me, but I don't like the guy. So, in the summary, our time has come for summary. Diplomatic leaks. The diplomatic leaks wants to state the following. Kenya and the Uganda, Djibouti, and Burundi, and Ethiopia have risked their children, their armed forces, to pacify Somalia. The United States of America, the United States of America left a problem in our hands. They dismembered Somalia. They created the chaos in Somalia, abandoned the Somali people, the period of terrorist warlords in the 1990s. We have 
as countries that I've mentioned, sacrificed quite a lot to make sure that peace returns to Mogadishu. The type of syndrome that is happening today that is bringing in mercantile capitalism, taking oil, even when you don't know whether it exists, is what is going to worry many Africans. On a serious note, my fellow African Somali people, we all love you. We have hope for you to re be reunited, brought back to the fold of international community. But the poor leadership of the people that you have selected yourselves to lead the country is what is worrying us. We don't condemn Somali people in blanket condemnation. The best Somali that we have in our country, my country, Uganda, are the best businessmen in my country. They are best good-hearted people in Uganda. The best Somali that we have in Kenya are the best, whether they are refugees, they are the best-hearted people. They value the material, the cooperation, the, the help that we have given to this country since 1991 after the overthrow of Siadibari. The many people who have grown up in this country, Kenya and the Uganda and other country, neighboring countries, value the friendship. The people who flew to America and grew up and obtained American passports, or Norwegian passports, or British passports, at least the British contingent that came to Britain has not misbehaved in its approach towards other situations in Somalia. I therefore pray that my Somali sisters and brothers rethink of a way of resolving this conflict outside the ICJ. Because remember, we shall all remain together until God separates us or unites us wherever we shall be. I want to take this opportunity to hand over to Miriam for her closing remarks on diplomatic leaks. Yes, indeed. But I think you've, you've, say, you've, you've said it so well in the closing remarks. I don't know if I have any more to add, but I think uh, that the peace and harmony between Kenya and Somalia, and, and indeed our neighboring, uh, our neighboring countries is very important, and uh, anything that uh, could put that into jeopardy is something that should be handled very carefully. So I'm just hoping that by the end of this whole process and all these things that are happening and all this outside of the external, uh, we've seen external influence really taking a deeper hand in this case, but outside of that I think it is for the benefit of uh, all the countries, uh, Kenya, Somalia, Uganda, Tanzania, all the countries, the neighboring countries, that uh, we have, uh, you know, a good neighborly uh, coexistence and relationship because it's for the good of all countries. So at the end of the day, we want to see a process uh, that, uh, you know, will we'll, 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 we'll still leave this, this uh, region intact, we'll still leave this region together and will not separate us and will not create any more acrimony that already we have experienced. Experience. So uh, thank you so much and all of you who have been writing. Whether you disagree with, with what uh, some of the things we've said or not, you know, we still appreciate that you took your time to uh, be part of the show today. support Kenya in the United Nations General Assembly. The candidature for Kenya is the safest in the hands of international community. The people of Kenya have played a pivotal role in bringing about the salvation that we have seen. We want to say thank you. Thank you very much.
this must be our goal and our guide. And all that we strive for as a human family, dignity and hope, progress and prosperity, depends on peace. But peace depends on us.